Thematic analysis is a common analytical strategy in qualitative research within the social sciences. It can be defined as a way of identifying patterns across a data set and interpreting these in a meaningful way. Thematic analysis is a flexible strategy. It can fit different research epistemologies, from critical realism to phenomenology. Often analyses can draw on thematic analysis in combination with other strategies, such as discourse analysis, narrative analysis or grounded theory. It can be done in a purely inductive way or in a deductive and theoretically informed manner. In this video, I will focus on the last orientation, trying to make this introduction relevant to those of you who are looking for ways of making your empirical data speak to a broader theoretical discussion. While it is widely used, many do not explicitly acknowledge that they are doing thematic analysis, which is not necessarily a problem as long as they are rigorous in their analysis. Here, however, I will try to clearly outline the main characteristics of this strategy so that you are in a position to choose whether it suits your design. Let us start with a very simple question. What is a theme? A theme is something of relevance to your research question that you can identify across a data set. In a qualitative research project, your empirical material tends to consist of different data sets. Therefore, it might make sense to conduct a thematic analysis within a particular data set rather than across the totality of the data you have collected. For example, if you study local governance and your data material consists of interviews with 10 elected politicians in addition to news clips from local media, interviews with some researchers and so on, a thematic analysis can be limited to the interviews with the politicians. That would be the particular data set in this case. But how does a theme qualify as relevant across the data set? It would be tempting to measure prevalence. Then, the more the subject is mentioned by the most number of participants, the more relevant it is. While measuring prevalence can be useful, it is not thematic analysis, it is counting. A thematic analysis is when the researcher engages with the data and, pre and presents a convincing explanation of why something is significant for the research question, even if it didn't show up frequently in the data set. In a widely cited text on thematic analysis in psychology, Virginia Brown and Victoria Clark makes an important distinction between thematic analysis that provides rich descriptions of the data set and those who construct detailed accounts of particular aspects within the data set. In other words, should your analysis be committed to presenting the data set in its entirety, in all its empirical breadth? Or should you strive to emphasize what you deem relevant at the expense of providing a full account of the data that you have collected? Not surprisingly, Brown and Clark favor the latter approach and argue that it is the most suited for theoretically informed case studies. So how is this done? How do you go from an unanalyzed data set to one in which relevant themes have emerged? Well, Brown and Clark, who are social constructivists, are quick to point out that relevant themes do not emerge from the data set. They are constructed. And guess who does the construction? You do. Constructing themes is an iterative process, but it does consist of several stages. Brown and Clark lists six different stages of thematic analysis. Many of these points are familiar in most qualitative analysis. Instead of spending time on each of these stages, which are presented well in the text, I will comment on a couple of critical phases in the anal analytical process. The first is the transition from stage two to stage three which is where your commitment to constructing themes meets the art of coding. A theme and a code is not the same, but themes can be constructed on the basis of codes. And the better you do the coding, the better you are positioned to construct relevant themes. For many, searching for themes involves endless mind maps of codes and their relations, constantly organizing and reorganizing the relationships between them. But if you are to end up with a convincing thematic analysis, you have to make sure that your previous stage, the initial coding, has left you with codes that are of substance. 
Sociologist Axel Jura encourages us to test our own codes by asking two simple questions. Could your code have been constructed before the coding? In other words, have you simply organized your material under pre-existing headings? And secondly, what does each code say on its own? Have you captured its essence? Without having done so, you will be unable to construct insightful themes across the coded dataset. Another crucial stage is stage four, when you review a set of potential themes in order to judge whether they function as themes in your analysis. When you are aiming to generate a theoretically informed analysis, this is where you actively start to compare themes against concepts in your theoretical framework. Do your empirical codes seem to exemplify concepts you have found in the literature before you collected data? Or is the match less than perfect? And do your codes in fact challenge, expand, or even negate your theoretical assumptions? By the end of stage five, you should be able to identify a set of themes, perhaps with an accompanying set of sub-themes. Your themes should be clearly demarcated and different enough to distinguish from each other. There should also be meaningful consistency throughout the codes under a single theme. And when you write, you aim to present each theme as a coherent, theoretically engaged story. I've already said that thematic analysis can overlap with other strategies. If you search for themes but limit this search to in one individual life story interview, we can talk about thematic narrative analysis. And if you search for themes without trying to link themes to pre-existing theoretical codes, your thematic analysis can be characterized as grounded theory. So is there then in all this flexibility any circumstances where a thematic analysis does not make sense? My answer is yes. In many research designs, pursuing this strategy of cross-analysis adds little value. The strength of this approach is identifying and interpreting themes across the dataset. If you're not interested in commonalities across a group of subjects or texts, then other forms of analysis might be better suited.